Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about React. So let's get into it. So the question in question was a little bit of a story, but it basically went, Frederick, what kind of React project would you consider to be a hard or an advanced project? Would you say that a project such as PHP, my admin, or sites like YouTube would count as applications well suited to be built in React? The reason why I asked was because today there was a freelance job recruiter who wanted to know how many years I had worked with React and I have to admit that my React experience cannot be listed in years. Maybe I have overlooked the importance of React in the job market. I've used to do I have used to do my front end using web components and custom element factory libraries and it has worked quite well but I do acknowledge that for the developers sake you should use standard tools I have been t thinking what I should do uh, as a react learning project I have fa uh, one fairly complex SPA product that I should that I could take and write a react version of what would you recommend to learn is it redux or uh, is redux used a lot with react I also got asked about GraphQL experience, so I guess I could integrate that in the project as well. What do you think? Well, uh, it's kind of funny because you talk about standard tooling for developers and web components are a standard, it's just that it's not adopted. Which I think that, that's kind of fun because this is an example of where the standard is actually not good enough for the vast majority of developers and therefore React or Angular View, etc., becomes the standard because it's the same thing with jQuery versus the old uh, browser APIs. Uh, so, to the first part of your question, do I consider PHP, my admin, and YouTube to be SBA sites? Well, YouTube is an SBA site. I'm not sure about PHP, my admin, but uh, yes, these would be very good examples of SBA type of applications, which is the perfect use case for something like React. And the reason is very simple because whenever you have an application which requires a lot of client side state where you have a lot of UI components that may be moving around or they might be changing states and you want to accommodate that state change without reloading the page. You want to be able to navigate between different pages or you might want to change complicated components that are connected to each other where you might have submenus or whatever. All of these sorts of things are very useful to build in an SBA type of application because they are designed to deal with the complexities of having a lot of JavaScript rendered, uh, JavaScript based rendering on the on the applic in the application, and that's very nice if you're not in an application where you just have basically static links or links that go somewhere and you have static web pages mostly, and uh, YouTube is definitely one of those platforms because if you've ever watched anything on YouTube, if you've been on YouTube, you'll know that most of the pages that you go to is like they're dynamic in nature. There's a lot of stuff that you can do on a page without necessarily clicking a link and moving from that page. That's exactly the sort of use case. The PHP my admin is a similar sort of deal where there's a it's an administrative tool basically, and such a tool is very very uh, well fitted for uh, to be implemented as an SBA. Now, as for whether or not Redux is relevant to React, yes, Redux is extremely relevant to React. Now, you don't necessarily need uh, need it because there are there's an like the later versions have an app context that is actually supported in a very similar way to Redux, but I will tell you that Redux is considered to be core knowledge. It is so common, in fact, that in many cases it's the standard for dealing with state in React, apart from, of course, the internal states that you get through the, uh, the library itself through, through React. But more complicated states and shared, uh, shared state is usually done with Redux. Another thing that you absolutely have to know about is React Rea Router. I would say that at the bare minimum, if you're going to learn the React ecosystem, you're going to need to learn React, Redux, and React Router. Without those three, I would say that no one will consider you to be a, uh, a like a React developer, like the, it, the these are the core libraries that everybody uses practically to do their work. There are others as well that may or may not be optional and so forth that you can make an argument for, but these would be the bare bone basics. As for GraphQL, the the thing about that is that 
in some cases you will find it to be part of a project this is much more back-end oriented work but GraphQL is, GraphQL is definitely considered to be part of the ecosystem that is React but it's not as with Redux and React Router. Redux and React Router you will find in every single serious project I can practically guarantee you that. GraphQL might be something you find in depending on region and depending on project you might find it and in many cases it's not going to be there but since it is so tightly embedded into the community and there is a a hype around it it is considered to be something you should at the very least be aware of whether or not you know how to work with it that's going to be up to well you i think that you should have a look at it uh, even though it's not the norm necessarily for how we do things in some cases it is very very common and just learning the query la querying language and the theory about how it works on the back end is something that is very useful i think it's interesting though that your full st uh, you don't actually state whether or not this is a full stack product because if it was just a if it's just a front end product graphql might be a little bit advanced to ask from a front end developer to learn because it actually requires quite heft if you're going to set that up it's quite a hefty investment and quite a lot of back end work to do that if you're a full stack developer well you're out of luck then you're definitely going to have to look at it and at least understand the basics so what i want you to take away from this is that if you're looking for to figure out what at least what i consider to be a hard or advanced application and you give me examples like php and my admin or youtube and so forth and you're looking for something that is sort of the product that you're going to figure out what, what scale level you are the thing about figuring out how hard something is is actually very tricky because it's very subjective how difficult an application is going to be or what's going to be an advanced project the best rule of thumb i can give you is that you measure it by feature the n number of features if you look at youtube youtube's ha youtube has thousands if not even hundreds of thousands of features that is a very advanced application it has a lot of stuff that you can do with it same thing with php my admin like a simple product is a small little blog or something like that where you only have a handful of features and that's it the bigger the larger systems usually are measured in because of the, the complexity is usually measured in how many features they have or at the very least for each feature it becomes more complicated so as a personal product building something like youtube or similar such a platforms if you have the energy to invest and actually do that then yes even if you build a a simple version of YouTube and I'm, I'm not talking the bare bone basics here I'm just talking about the platform that you can actually use and that has some value to somebody you're gonna be getting a lot of practice in with uh, with react if that is your choice and if you're asking me about okay redux relevancy so forth what is that that you that is it that you actually need to know about react well the bare bone minimum is going to be react redux and react router these are the core the cornerstones of the entire ecosystem. I will add TypeScript as well, not necessarily because it's a hundred percent guaranteed that you're going to use it, but the adoption of it is so in so monstrous that it's almost a, it's almost the best a standard practice these days. GraphQL is a it's a bit of a gamble or it's a mixed bag. In some products and in some regions, they favor GraphQL a lot, but it's mostly a server side technology, so it's not really the front end thing. Uh, that is relevant there uh, you will need to know about it at least the basics to just figure out how it works because as I said in some cases you might actually find that it's in your project you may not necessarily unless you're going to be a full stack developer or something like that know how to set the whole thing up and wire everything up because there is a qu there is quite a lot to learn there but at least learn the querying language that is going to probably be set you up for what you need in order to be a front-end developer in react have a great day